what does sort of transference centric approach mean to you, mate? <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult one. We were talking about that one today, and it's um it's very easy to throw it out. And I think um as much as we talk a lot about the transference and how we can actually um, you know take what we do in the gym and take what we do in our training to to performance, it's really about um you know having a look at our program and integrating the different parts of our program together. Um, you know, I think it's very easy for us to be looking at strength, you know, looking at conditioning, looking at speed in a very siloed manner. So uh, I like to think one of the strengths of our programs is the, the ability for the athlete and the, and the coaches to see how what we do in the gym actually relates directly to what we do on the field. Um, so as, as much as, you know, we, we talk about that transference and how we can use our, our gym side, it, it really is, you know, probably a better way of putting it is in, in that integration. Um Having said that, you know, like when we, we, we really try and um, set our athletes up in a manner that they can actually to look at some problem solving. When you're talking about transference, is that uh, obviously there's some physical qualities that's, that's happening there, um, but is it also the ability for them to um, go through that process and learn uh, and find a way is, is also not something that you think uh, helps with on-field performance in terms of their, from a mindset point of view? Hmm. Oh, 100%, I think, you know. Like anyone learning, you know, if you, if you find a way to do it and you, 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 are, you understand why you're doing it, I think you're going to get better results in the end. Um, you know, there's, there's periods where you can get frustrated when, you you know, you want to jump in and tell them the answer or you want to, you know, tell them to do it this way. But, um, you know, sometimes, like I say, you've got to shut up and let them let them fail, you know, and by failing actually learn the ways forward. You know, anyone who's got kids out there, it's probably a very similar way of looking at things, you know, like you, it's... um. Uh, it, it is it is that discovery and it like i say it's, it tends to be more ingrained if you've actually felt the way uh any and you felt the success of the way you've done it what are some of the key learnings do you think um to be aware of when you're implementing this um like is, is it perhaps maybe some cognitive things like if, they, if the athletes have come from a long meeting it's early in the week they're still fatigued from the game is some of this stuff quite challenging to, you know for the athletes to concentrate is it more to do later in the week or or, or does that not really matter um, you talk us through, I guess, your thought process in how you plan and, and implement uh, this type of training for, uh, I guess, when it's new to the environment. Hmm. I think it's a it's a progression into this training. You know, we we still can't we still can't um, ignore that traditional strength development from a, both a metabolic and a mechanical perspective as well. You know, so we still do need to build connective tissue. We still need to build strength. We need to build uh, joint strength and so on. Um, <clears throat> but there should be a stream of this linked in all the way through. You know, I think we've, we've, we've tried it both pretty quickly after a game and we find there is a, and again, I can't quantify this. So this is a little bit anecdotally, but there's a real neural, uh, a neural excitation for one of a better phrase, you know, that actually helps our athletes recover is without that real, um, uh, like neuromuscular fatigue coming in as well. Key pillar that you're focusing on with this type of stuff is it more their upright running postures, like change of direction? What are sort of the key areas that you're ultimately wanting to see this stuff, I guess, complement or supplement? Yeah, I think you pretty much just yeah. summed it up there. But <laughs> probably our biggest areas, you know, in a rugby league context, you know, the, the the key points of the game. You know, you've got to have that underlying ability to stay in the game, and um, but the the key points of the game are making up those two or three meters. So your first three steps, whether that be off a, a straight line or a multi directional um, position. And the ability to change and change direction and go, uh, you know that that's what's going to make or break, um, or you know make a tackle or break a tackle, I suppose, or make a break or not. Uh, you know, it's it's a foot here and there that actually makes a difference. So, <clears throat> a big part of what we talk about is being able to hit the ground, express that force, and move quickly. And as you mentioned just before there as well, like that can uh, literally be how we set it up in a stream. So we might have a superset that that can be addressing. Um, max velocity running positions, um, so like a triple extension, uh, upright torso, um, whatever that might be. But then we also might have a, a different superset within the same set session that's looking at a more of a, a change of direction um, position. And the rotational aspect, um, what is that looking to, to help? Is that uh, help the athletes get into those optimal shapes to produce that force? Or is it like specifically allowing them to, um, you know, uh, get into better trunk positions to maybe catch the ball or yeah what, why is the rotational aspect uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll look at both of those yeah, absolutely look at both of those i think um we you know we've got a couple of athletes who struggle to pass you know struggle to pass i'm going to put it in a nice way but you know they're, they're, they're maybe they're left or right pass and there might be some you know physical restrictions in there so we'll we'll uh, we'll set up the exercise to address that from a different different way and that we would from getting into the optimal shapes to produce power 
Um, but I think, you know, as you said, to start getting into those optimal shapes to produce power is um, is probably the the underlying side. 